good morning today's class we are going to discuss about the important topic in endodontics that is diagnosis in endodontics let us know the contents of the same we will be dealing the diagnosis in endodontics under the following headings that is beginning with the introduction chief complaint history case history record case in that we have medical history dental history pulpal test and clinical examination which includes extraoral examination intraoral examination and also the some special clinical test and lastly the conclusion so let's begin with the introduction so historically there was a variety of diagnostic classification systems advocated for determining the endodontic diseases unfortunately the majority have been based on the histopathological findings rather than the clinical findings often leading to confusion such clinical findings often led to the confusion misleading the terminologies or improper or incorrect diagnosis so in dentistry the what is exactly the diagnosis it is defined as the process whereby the data obtained by from questioning the patients and examining followed by the test some of the clinical tests are combined by the dentist to identify the deviations from the normal presentation clinical presentation this can be achieved either using by careful listening to the patient in his own words and also some of the clinical diagnostic tests to be conducted so the process of diagnosis includes five stages they are divided under five stages first is the patient tells in the first time the patient tells the clinician why he is come or visiting a dentist or why he is seeking the advice from the dentist that is in the technical word we can call it as chief complaint it should be recorded in his own words patient's own words and usage of technical word should be as minimal as possible and clinician should question the patient about the symptoms what exactly he feels how exactly the the history the like when the problem or the advice why he is seeking that advice when it started all that should be started in the medical and dental history now now the in the third part clinician performs some objective clinical test that is examination and the chair side testing and this relates this helps us to relates the objective findings with the subjective complaint what the patient says we should able to relate we should you know do the uh, connective test so that we will be reaching the tentative differential diagnosis by the clinical test and the chief complaint we should be able to reach the differential diagnosis of the same some of the clinical condition and uh, with all this we can come to a definitive diagnosis moving on to the first part of the diagnosis that is a chief complaint that is what is chief complaint that's patient's reason for seeking a care or attention expressed in terms as close as possible to those used by the patient or the respons responsible informant in order to ascertain a correct diagnosis the patient's chief complaint should be documented properly in his own words and also for the medical legal reasons we should also make sure that the chief complaint is recorded or documented in the patient's own words moving on to the second part that is history and the case record they in that medical history any so uh, uh, systemic involvement of the any clinical condition which requires dental intervention should be you know noted down in the medical history in the dental history we should also know the when the problem has started and the prehistory of the present dental problem when the first time the symptom has developed what are the attention what are the treatment is taken any other dental you know advises or any other dental clinic he has visited we should always record in the dental history so now the medical history clinician is responsible for taking a proper medical history for every patient who presents for the 
treatment any patient of a record should be questioned at the each treatment visit to determine any changes in the patient medical or the me medical history or the medications so clinician should evaluate a patient's response to health questionnaire from majorly two perspectives that is medical conditions and the current medication that will necessitate any alteration in the treatment regimen dental treatment regimen which will be provided and medical condition that may have oral manifestation or any intervention from from the medication part moving on to the dental history that is the chronological events first the when the first as i said when the first problem was noticed what was the nature of the if he example if the patient has a pain what aggravates the pain what relieve, relieves the pain of that particular tooth what initiates the pain duration of the pain how long the pain will continue once the, it is started all this should be noted in a chronological manner which will help the clinician to do a particular diagnostic test chair side diagnostic test so uh, these are i uh, or followed the, this, they should include pra, as i said past and the present symptoms procedures or any trauma that might have evoked the chief complaint like pain in any example in any case for proper documentation so sop is a designating the subjective objective appraisal form for the diagnostic workup so in that clinical test first and foremost is the pulp testing we have to in the endodontics we have to establish the vitality of the pulp whether the offended tooth is vital or non vital that can be achieved by the uh, process of pulp testing that are divided into sensibility test that is which relies on the nerve fibers of the vital pulp that is sensory nerve fibers they are thermal test that is either cold test or the heat test and the electric test electric pulpal testing is the other method of sensibility pulp sensibility test next is the vitality test they rely on the intact vasculature or the um blood supply of they depend upon the blood supply of the pulp or that particular offending tooth so they are that is why they are called vitality test previous ones are called sensibility test they rely on the sensory nerve fibers of the remaining pulp tissue and here it depends upon mainly on the remaining vascularity or the blood supply of the particular tooth they can be done uh, by ldf laser doppler flow metry or pulse oximetry and the accessory test third one is the accessory test among these pulp testing the vitality tests are more reliable than the sensibility test and the quantitative evaluation of the status of the pulp can only be determined histologically when the tooth is extracted under normal clinical conditions which is not possible so we mostly more uh, majorly we depend upon this pulp vitality test moving on to the in detail about the pulp sensibility test the first is the cold testing here healthy pulp when it is exposed to extremely heat or a, will, in this time will started with the cold testing when we the pulp is exposed to severely cold condition the uh, in a normal pulp the cold sensation disappears almost immediately within 3 to 5 seconds uh, once the cold stimulus is removed that noxious stimulus is removed from that particular offending tooth this is the response of a healthy pulp or a reversible pulpitis whereas in the diseased pulp the same noxious stimuli when the cold stimuli is uh, presented to that offending tooth the the pain or the sensation or the lingering or the intensification of this painful sensation will continue sometime or it may be excruciatingly more painful than it was before and 
it can be you know sometimes there may not be any response when the tooth is totally dead there are chances of there is a lack of response can also occur so in a deceased pulp we can expect three types of response that is lingering or intensified or more exaggerated response compared to the healthy pulp or an immediate response within not even a um, 3 to 5 seconds it may take more lesser time to respond and in the third condition it may there may not be any response so rest of the class rest in the next time we'll continue rest of the cold test